نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان استقى حديث كلام الله وخير الحج حج محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محتفاتها وكل محتفه برعه وكل برعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار if at any time inshallah ta'ala you brothers feel that there's a need for you to come forward without anyone at without to be at the behest of anyone then do so inshallah today we discuss an issue that is something constant something consistent that the believers have to be reminded of particularly in this country and particularly when the weather gets hot like this and that is the lowering of the gaze that is the lowering of the gaze the believer who loves allah tabarak wa ta'ala the believer who tries to obey allah tabarak wa ta'ala the believer who tries to be upon ta'ah obedience the believer who starts tries to stay away from maasi and as much as he can avoiding the maasi the sins the matters that displease allah tabarak ta'ala he is aware that allah tabarak ta'ala has ordered us to do certain things and has forbidden us from certain things and that that which he has ordered us to do we are to do as much of it as we are able and that which we are forbidden from we are not to do it simply as put as that we are not to do it not a second word we are not to do it so in this regard remind the believing men and the believing women today about the issue of lowering the gaze about the issue of it being forbidden for us to look at everything that we might desire to look at that is not lawful for us to allow our eyes to go wherever we want to take them but rather our eyes are restricted to that which is permissible to look at that which has been made permissible in the book of Allah tabarak ta'ala on the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we don't have this kafir mentality the absolute freedom that you can do whatever you want we know this is not the time or the circumstance or the place for that but rather we have to restrict and define ourselves or confine ourselves to the book of Allah tabarak ta'ala and the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah tabarak ta'ala says qul lil mu'minina yaghdhu min absarihi say to the believing men that they must lower their gaze that they must lower their gaze say to the believing men that they can't look at whatever they want to look at that they must not look at that which is haram or forbidden for them to look at this is a clear ayah and allah says qul lil mu'minat say to the believing women not so that it won't be thought that it's just an order for men and that the women are allowed to look at absolutely whatever they want but rather the women are not allowed to look at whatever they want but they are also restricted in as to what they can look at qul lil mu'minat say to the believing women yughdu min that they should lower absarihinna they absarihinna and i say it like that because i don't have the ayah in front of me that they should lower their gaze that they should not look except at that which allah made permissible and this is one why one of the beautiful qualities of the women of jannah is qasirat at-tarf they shorten their sights are shortened their sights are restricted to their husbands in the jannah and allah ta'ala mentions this this is one of their beautiful qualities of the women of paradise that their sights are only focused 
upon their husband. They do not look anywhere else. Qasirat al-Tarf. Yani that their sight is focused upon their husbands. So this is a great quality. And the, and the believing woman who has this quality in this world certainly has one of the qualities of the women of Jannah. That she does not look at anything and everything, but she focuses her sight upon her husband. She focuses her sight upon her husband and what is lawful for him, or what is lawful for her, rather I should say, to look at. In sam'a wal basara wal fuad. Very the hearing, the sight, and the heart. Very the hearing, the sight, and the heart. Kullu ulaika kana anhu mas'ula. About all of these matters you will be asked about. About all of these matters, one will be asked about. We will be asked about our son, our hearing. What do we allow ourselves to listen to? Do we allow ourselves to listen to gossip? Do we allow ourselves to listen to the mima, slander, kill tearing? You know, kill tearing, uh, kill, uh, tail tearing, I should say, tail tearing. Do we allow ourselves to listen to riba, backbiting? Do we allow ourselves to be behind the door and listen to the talkings, the secret talkings of people? While we know that they are displeased with that, this is not something allowed. So Mas'ula, we were asked about it. Asked by who? By Allah Tabaraka Ta'ala. Who nothing is hidden from him. Who every issue regarding us is recorded and known. Well, Basr, the sight. We'll be asked about our sight. What did we do with it? Did we look at those matters that were forbidden for, for us to look at? Did we look at the women around this area or some other area? Unclothed, naked basically. Did we look at them? Do we take this filthy habit of looking at women that the kuffar do? As if it's something normal. La ba's bihi. No problem with it. Look at what you want to look at. No, this is not the mentality of a believer. As a matter of fact, a believer who has that type of mentality is deficient in his iman. And has not, le- learnt, uh, has not yet learned his Islam. So it's a matter that we will be asked about our sight. And no matter how we try to conceal it. No, how, no matter how we try to be deceitful m- with it. No matter how we try to do it, as they say on the sly, Allah Taala is totally aware of it. Allah Taala is totally aware of it, and we will be asked about it. Well, fuad kulu ulaika kana anhu masula, and that's what I wanted to get from that particular ayah. Of all of these matters, we will be asked about. We will be questioned. There is a day where we'll be questioned. None of us will be ghaib, absent. Every one of us will be present. And every one of us will have to stand account. And every one of us will be questioned. Allah Taala says, for those who, who think that it may have been a situation where they could look very quickly, and Allah Taala is not aware of them, that it's just a glance, I'm just going to take a quick glance. And then I'm going to p- place my eyes back where this is supposed to be. For those who may have thought that Allah Taala was unaware of them, Allah Taala has given us a text clarifying this issue for those who are so misfortunate to think that way. For those who are that misfortunate to think that way. Those who don't have the, the glorification and magnification of Allah in their hearts. They don't have enough fear of Allah in taqwa. That they thought that they could in fact fool Allah ta'ala or at least that they could do something very quickly where he would be unaware. Allah says, يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةُ الْأَعْيُونَ He knows the deceit of the eyes. He knows the deceit of the eyes. يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةَ الْأَعْيُنْ He knows the deceit of the eyes. وَمَا تُخْفِ الصُّدُورِ And what is hidden in the hearts. He knows the deceit of the eyes, the traveling of the eyes, the looking of the eyes, the trickery of the eyes, the playing of the eyes, the stilling of sight, the stilling and glancing from here to there of the eyes. And furthermore, he knows what the hearts conceal. What the hearts conceal. Of all that the heart conceal. Amongst them is the intention for which a person does an action. That his intent when he looked was in fact to sin. That his intent was to look, was to do that which was haram. That his intent when he looked was to do that which Allah Taala has forbidden. It's not concealed from Allah Taala ta'ala whatsoever. So those of us who have the audacity or the gall to let our eyes go anywhere we want as if we have not heard these verses or as if we don't believe in them or as if we're not trying to implement them 
It is time for them to become aware that this is from the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that if one disobeys Allah tabarak ta'ala, Allah tabarak ta'ala has something for that individual. Inna rabbaka labir mirsad. There your Lord is ever watching. We took it also in the ayah that we took in Khutat Hajjah. Inna Allah kana alaykum raqiba. They are aware of you. Watching you. Looking to what you do. Checking you out, as it were. Everyone is in this state or status with Allah. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. And this is part of the rububiyah of Allah. The lordship of Allah tabarak ta'ala. And it is from his highest names and most beautiful qualities that he is watching, that he is a witness, that he is aware, that he has full knowledge of our actions. So these are some ayat regarding that issue. I, I ask that you reflect upon them and that you don't let them go upon in one ear out the other, but that, that you let them intermingle with your heart and affect you. So that once you come out of, out of, out of this masjid, inshallah ta'ala, if there is that which is before you, which you are forbidden to look at, that you reflect upon these ayat, you recall them, and you lower your gaze. You implement what you have heard. We implement what we have heard. An Abi Hurairah radiyallahu anhu. An Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala. Abu Hurairah alayhi the prophet of Allah alayhi wa sallam said, Kutiba ala ibn Adam. I hope there's room back there. If there's not, you should come forward. If there's not, you should come forward. Seems like brothers have some space. I'm not sure. Kutiba ala ibn Adam. Nasibuhu min zina. It's been written on the son of Adam. His portion of adultery or fornication. Because when you use the term zina in the Arabic language, you know, it's, know that it includes both. Zina includes someone who falls into illegal sexual intercourse. And was not married ever in their life. This is called fornication. And zina includes someone. Who falls into illegal sexual intercourse. And has been married. Or at the time that they would fall into illegal sexual intercourse. They were in fact married. Or they had been married once in their life. This is a greater sin and this is adultery. The fornicator gets lashes. And the adulterer is stoned. Kutiba Ali ibn Adam. Nasibuhu min zina His portion of zina, fornication or adultery. Muturikum dhalika la mahala. That will happen to him, there's no way for him to escape it. Al aynani zina human nadr. The fornication or adultery of the eyes is the look. Is the look. Looking at that which has been forbidden is a form of fornication or adultery. Wa uthnani zina huma lishtima'u. And the ears, the fornication of adultery of the ears is to listen to that which has been forbidden. وَلِسَانُ زِنَاهُ الْكَلَامُ And the tongue, it's fornication of adultery, is the talk, the illicit speech, the speech that is forbidden, the speech that is wrong, the speech that is haram. وَلْيَدُ زِنَاهَا الْبَتْشُ And the hand is, is fornication of adultery, is to touch and the feet, their fornication or adultery is to walk towards that. And the heart desires and hopes. Come forward. Come forward, brothers. He's uh, standing there waving his hands. So come forward if you can. Some of us move quicker than others. Some of us respond quicker than others. And the heart desires and wants. Will you suddik dhalik al farju or you kadibuhu? And then the private parts either confirm it or deny it. And either one will then fall into the actual zina or not. So, in reality, the way to cut oneself off from falling into that which is haram is as Allah said, don't come near to zina. Other words, don't come near the preliminaries. Don't come near that which preceded. That which leads to it. From looking, from listening, from walking, from touching, from hearing, from talking. 
All of those will eventually lead to it. Because the private process, as the prophet Islam said, will either confirm it or deny it. Will either confirm it or deny it. And if someone lets their eyes go anywhere, and their glance go anywhere, and they talk to anybody they feel they have a right to talk to, he a ajnabiya, he's a Muslim, ajnabiya, foreign to me, not my mother, not my daughter, not my sister, not my niece, not my aunt, I'm not supposed to be talking to her. But if I let my tongue go like that and talk, and then suddenly the kalam falls into that which is haram, then suddenly that leads to something else, which leads to something else, which may lead to my destruction. So these are all a matter of telling us to watch out for those things that lead to it. Don't even do that. If you don't look, you won't see. And if you won't see it, you won't desire it. And if you don't desire it, you won't seek to make contact, rather through walking over there, or talking, or, or writing a letter, or a phone call, or whatever. So it starts with the glance. It starts with the sight. Warabuna Hakim, our Lord is wise. He legislated this legislation to, to protect us, and to, to, to help us deal with our own deficiencies, protect us from harming ourselves, and to purify us, and cleanse us, and correct us. So that we can be, in fact, those individuals who are ready for the Jannah. Who are ready for the paradise. For paradise is that which nobody enters except a tahir The one who's pure and clean. A tayyid. Very Allah is good, and he doesn't accept, he doesn't accept, accept that which is good. A tayyid. So if we want to be in the Jannah, we have to be right. We have to be righteous. Nobody said ma'asum, perfect. But many times when our brothers speak about being perfect, they're really speaking about let me go on and continue my faults and not correct myself. And there's a vast difference between the two. When your sins are the exception and not the rule, then we will say yes. Nobody's perfect. But when it's the rule and obedience is the exception, we say no, that's a cop out. You're not being real with yourself and you regret all of that in the hereafter. عن أبي سعيد الخدر رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إياكم والجلوس في طرقات Woe to you from city in the pathways of the people And I noticed that this is seems something to be I mean, here as well as in certain other cities Washington and Detroit and other places where it has been commonly the habit of African men to gather and, and have their conferences and consultation and advisements and whatever upon the corner. And we have taken this, most of us, and brought it into Islam with us. And we find ourselves maybe on the corner at one time or another. So Jalus with Turuqat, sitting in the airs of the pathways of the people. Prophet right, said, Word to you from that. It's like Sahaba had the same issue. Oh, Messenger of Allah, we have to sit. You have to sit. Have to sit. Huh? So the Prophet Islam said, so we can call. They say we we sit so we can talk. Fakar Rasulullah, the Messenger Allah said, okay. Further abaytum, if you refuse, except to sit. Further baytum al majlis, except to sit. Fa'atul tariqa haqqahu. Give the pathways its rights. Give it its rights. وَمَا حَقُّ التَّرِيكِ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ They said, oh, قَالُوا What is the rights of the pathway? What is the rights of the streets, O Messenger of Allah? قَالَ غَدُّ الْبَصَرِ Lowering the gaze. Lowering the gaze. You're going to be in front of the masjid? You've got to lower your gaze. This thing walked by and that thing walked by? This thing with tarmarbuta? Thinga? Walk by? you got to lower your gaze. This is from the what? The rights of the turuk. وَكَفُلْ أَذَى And not harming anyone. Making sure you don't harm no one. وَرَدُّ salam, Responding to the greeting that is given to you. وَالْعَمْرُ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Ordering what is good. وَنَحْيُ عَنِ munka, Or beating what is bad. A brother may say, well, if I got to do that, I might as well come into the masjid. The reality is, this is the rights. 
These are the rights of the pathways. If you're going to be standing out there, this is what we have to do. And how many times a brother stands there and he doesn't do this? Doesn't respond to salam because he's too busy looking at something he's supposed to be looking at. And many times he's not ordering what is good, but he's ordering what is bad and forbidding what is good. And that's another khutbah. عن أبي طلحة زير بن سحل قال كنا قعود بالأفنية نتحدث فيها we was out in the opening city and we was talking فجاء رسول الله so the Messenger of Allah is from Cain فقام علينا he stood over us فقال ما لكم ولما جعل السعودات why are you sitting in these open cities it's stunning when we جعل السعودات don't sit in these cities فقال إنما كعدنا لغير بعث ما بعث we said with no real harm intended with no problem we said to remind each other and to conversate. To remind each other and to conversate. Don't do it. But if you're going to do it, then fulfill its right. Lower your gaze. Respond to the greeting. Make sure your talk is good. Make sure your speech is good. All of these are authentic hadith, either muttafiqun alayhi in Bukhari and Muslim, or Bukhari by itself, or Muslim by itself. May Allah give us tawfiq to act upon it. Walhamdulillah. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Wa ba'ak. Khayrin, ya aba uwais. You've told us that we must lower our gaze, or you have brought narrations an ayat regarding that. But you know our condition. We are surrounded by all types of fitting. And our eyes may unintentionally fall upon someone. Well the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has given us a, a remedy for that illness. وَعَنْ جَارِيرِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قَالَ He said, Jarir, I asked the Messenger of Allah. سَأَوْتُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ I asked the Messenger of Allah. Another al-fajati about the unintended look, the sudden look, the look that you had no intention behind. It was done without your ikhsiya, without your choice. You came out, your eyes fell that way. You came out, you just glanced that way. He asked the messenger, messenger of Allah about that. The Prophet said, "Isrif basarak, turn your eyes." Turn your eyes. And so for some reason, some brothers misunderstood this hadith. And the one, the, probably the following one, where the Prophet said, for you is the first, yani, meaning that you was mistaken, so it's not, you're not taking account, but you don't have the second. So they said, well, that means I have a first glance. And then they just take a glance. Well, you know, this is all right, this is my first glance. This is the type of foolishness we have to deal with. The immaturity that is there. Which makes the nusus or the text, the deen, capitulate to the desires rather than vice versa. And Um Salama radiallahu anhu qalad. Um Salama stated, Kuntu inda Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam indahu maymuna. Said, I was with the Messenger of Allah alayhi wa sallam and he had maymuna with him. Fa'akbala ibn Um Maktum. Ibn Um Maktum came, the blind man. Wa dhalika ba'da anhu mirna bil hijab. And that's after we was ordered to uh, wear hijab. Cover. فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اتجب منه Cover yourselves from him. Cover yourselves from him. فقال يا رسول الله ليس هو أعمى أو مسجد الله isn't he blind? لا يبصرنا ولا يعرفنا He doesn't see us. He doesn't know us. فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أفعم يا أفعم يا واني أنتما Are the two of you blind? ألستما تبصرانه Don't you two see him? So this narration deals with the fact that the women have to lower their gaze also. That they cannot simply look at what they want to look at. There are some exceptions to this rule we know. Like where in the Prophet Salam on the Yom Al-Aid allowed the women to see Ethiopia uh, doing some uh, Hassini in Ethiopia uh, doing some uh, activity with their spears and whatever. This is an exception to the rule. But the norm of the matter is, is that she is to lower her gaze. She is to lower her gaze. When Abi Sa'id radiyallahu anhu, anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qala, 
لا ينظر الرجل إلى آرة الرجل A man should not look to the private areas of another man or those things that are forbidden for another man to see from another man. This is another form of lawyering against also. وَلَا مَرْعَةُ إِلَىٰ عَوْرَةِ الْمَرْعَةِ Nor the woman to the private parts or to the area, the aura that must be covered of other women. وَلَا يُفْضِي رَجُلُ وَلَا رَجُلُ مِنْ فِي ثَوْبٍ وَاحِدٍ And no man should lay under one cloth. وَلَا تُفْضِي الْمَرْعَةُ إِلَىٰ مَرْعَةِ فِي ثَوْبٍ وَاحِدٍ And no woman should, wear, should be with another woman under one cloth. All of these are perimeters that the Sharia has set in place so that we are protected from falling into that which is forbidden. Protected from falling into that which is forbidden. So it is a matter of, of taqwa. It is a matter of taqwa. There's also the forbidden of being with a woman who is not a relative of yours other than cousin because a cousin of course is in Islam can be married we're talking about aunt a wife sister maternal aunt paternal aunt grandmother niece like this these are women forbidden for you to marry and it's perfectly natural perfectly right that you be uh, with them and you can be along with them in seclusion and in private no problem with that but al ajnabiyya the woman who is not of your relatives the woman who is not your wife, the woman who is not related to you through the rahm, like I say, with the exception of the cousin, it's forbidden for you to be with your cousin, female cousin alone. Then in that regard, you're not to be with a woman by yourself. This is something strictly forbidden. Listen to the statement of Allah Taala in Surah Ahzab 53. Where thou sa'altum uhunna mata'an, and if you ask them for something, mata'an. Huh? فَاسْعَلُوهُنَّ مِنْ وَرَاءِ هِجَابِ Ask them from behind a veil. This is not only particular, this is not just particular to the wives of the Prophet Matter of fact, it's not particular at all. It is a general ruling. That if you're going to ask a woman that is not lawful for you to, uh, that, that is not married to you, and it's not lawful for you to be along with, in seclusion with, then you are to ask her, مِنْ وَرَاءِ هِجَابِ I is clear, I don't know how you can, Anyone can misunderstand it. Whether I say out to if you're going to ask them, Mata'an, for anything, hand me that bowl, hand me that piece of paper, hand me this, right? Fas'aluhunna min wara'i hijab. Ask them from behind the hijab. Wa an Uqba ibn Amir radiyallahu anhu. Not to Uqba ibn Amir. Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala, the Messenger of Allah said, Iyakum wa dukhulu ala nisah. Woe to you for entering upon the women. Of course, he means entering into their presence here. Anything else would be absurd. Woe to you for entering upon the presence of women. Entering into the presence of women. فَقَالَ رَجُمَ أَنْسَارَ أَبْرَأَيْتَ الْحَمْوَى What about the brother-in-law? One of the answers said, what about the brother-in-law? قَالَ الْحَمْوُ الْمَوْتِ The brother-in-law is death. The brother-in-law is death. And in other words, if anyone should be uh, avoided from being in the presence of women, as to, as to everyone who is not legally married to them, or is not lawful for them to be in their company, then the brother-in-law is first and foremost. The brother-in-law is first and foremost. وَعَنِ ibn Abbas رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمَا أَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَمْ قَالَ ibn Abbas relates that the messenger said, لا يخلون أحدكم بامرأة. Don't be alone in seclusion, any of you, with a woman. Can you get much clearer than that? إلا ما أذى محرم. Except someone that you are محرم for. That it's lawful for you to be around them. لا يخلون أحدكم بامرأة. In Arabic, يخلون means to be by yourself. To be by yourself with that woman. Summer that it seems like it may be. And a fitna that comes at us like waves. And the absence of the modesty of the people that we cohabitate with, if you will, or the people that we have to be around. That we are able to act upon this. And it takes men who are sincere. And it takes women who are sincere. And it takes those who fear Allah Taala, even when no one else is around. Where that Allah is watching them 
and is aware of what they do with their eyes. They are Allah Ta'ala would judge the servants. So we ask Allah Ta'ala for tawfiq. Hala wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa aqimu salam.